All right, silly people, here's the situation. Uh, we have this alternate Lagrange density for the electromagnetic uh, fields, um, and we're going to act the field equation on it uh, and see what happens. So the first component of the field equation that we're going to look at is the partial of the Lagrange gene with respect to del beta A beta, or A mu. Yeah. A mu. Um, so, and there should be a minus sign here from the problem statement. So we'll have a 1 over 8 pi, and then this is going to be a product rule. So we're going to have a del alpha A beta, and then take the derivative of del alpha A beta uh, with respect to del beta A mu. Um, and then we'll also have the partial, so it's going to be superscript alpha, superscript beta, and then now the partial with respect to this stuff, and there should be a subscript beta here, del beta a mu, yeah, okay. Uh, and then the current term doesn't affect because it doesn't have anything like del, del a mu. So um, just doing these derivatives, we're going to get some crazy stuff. We're going to get two Kronecker deltas. So uh, alpha up top, beta up top. So we'll have alpha, beta, and then beta up top, mu up top. So beta mu. And then this guy, we've got a chronic delta with alpha bottom on beta on top, and then mu top beta bottom. <laughs> beta bottom. Uh, let's act those chronic deltas on the um, derivatives. So that's going to turn into a del um, alpha a mu, okay, or actually del beta a mu, whoops, del beta a mu plus del also beta a mu. So in total it's minus 1 over 4 pi uh, del beta a mu. Okay, uh, then we need to take the four divergence of that now. Uh, so the four divergence of this thing which we just calculated, which is going to be minus 1 over 4 pi del beta del beta a mu. Okay, uh, that is actually just the box of mu. So we have a little square there, a mu. Okay, uh, finally we need to calculate the partial derivative of the Lagrange density with respect to just a mu. Um, so we just get the minus 1 over c j alpha del a alpha del a mu, which turns into minus 1 over c j alpha Kronecker delta alpha mu, which turns into minus 1 over c j mu. Okay, we are going to then just do the weight, the field equation now. So this is minus 1 over 4 pi box a mu on the left hand side and then on the right hand side we have minus 1 over c j mu and we can simplify a bit to have 4 pi over c j mu. Uh, this looks a lot like the Maxwell's equations so this is going to be our solution looks a lot like the Maxwell equations but when Jackson was doing it with a different form of the Lagrange density he had this extra term, del alpha a alpha 
equals 4 pi over c j mu, uh, which he called the inhomogeneous Maxwell's equations. Difference is between our solution and the inhomogeneous is that del alpha a sub alpha is going to zero for ours, which is actually just the Lorentz condition. Uh, so the Lagrange density here is the Lagrange density for the um, Lorentz gauge, and that's a pretty useful thing to know. Um, and then Jackson also asks us how does this Lagrange density differ from the inhomogeneous Lagrange density, uh, which he has here, minus 1 over 16 pi. And then he has a couple of strength tensors, uh, minus 1 over C J alpha A alpha. So just expanding the strength tensors, actually, we're going to have del alpha A beta minus del beta A alpha, and this is times del alpha A beta minus del uh, beta A alpha minus 1 over C J alpha A alpha. Uh, and so we can expand the uh, multiplication of the partials and the A's. So we have del alpha A beta, del alpha A beta, minus del beta A alpha, del alpha A beta, uh, minus del alpha A beta, del beta A alpha, plus del beta A alpha, uh, del beta A alpha, right. And then we have the four current piece. Um, so we can actually collect these because this subscript matches this subscript, and this one matches this one. Uh, and then the same sort of thing can happen here. We can switch uh, any of the indexes that are summed over. So we're actually going to have minus 1 over 8 pi, and we'll have this neat thing, which we've seen before in the Lagrange density Jackson gave us, also the same uh, for current piece. But then we have an additional term, which is really weird. And because it's del beta A alpha, del alpha A beta, it's interesting because uh, this index doesn't match this index, and this index doesn't match this index. Um, and so this quantity actually uh, can be expanded if we consider the fact that this is actually a four divergence of some quantity, and I'm going to call it the four divergence del beta of this quantity A alpha del alpha a beta. Whenever you expand this product rule, uh, you'll get your del beta a alpha thing back, plus uh, del alpha del beta a beta. So again, we use the fact that our Lagrange density is representing the Lorentz gauge. So del beta a alpha del beta a beta is actually zero. Uh, so yes, we can rewrite uh, the old Lagrangian a beta del alpha a beta. This is for the inhomogeneous electric fields as being added on by this divergence of a alpha del alpha a beta, but in the Lorentz gauge that goes to zero and you get back the Lagrangian that Jackson gave us for the problem. Uh, so yeah, in Lorentz gauge. Enjoy that.